testimony, I want you to put your hand over your mouth and do not utter a word. Okay, I won't say anything. She is Satan. Stay quiet. I understand. She's Satan reincarnated. Just be quiet. I understand. Okay. Please stay away from my client. There is no reason. Yeah, see? That's what Satan does. Come on, come on. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you, Mickey Mouse. Raise your hands before. No, no, no. no, no, no. You're supposed to ask before, before that. Go on, shout, shout, dummy. That's okay. All right. Um, Miss True Shot, you may proceed. Miss True Shot, you may proceed. One second while I look at my notes. Bailiff, can I make She's a request? She's not even ready. Bailiff, come here. No, jurors are supposed to just sit there and be Judge, quiet. Judge, can you hear me? Old Judge, man, sir, give me one second. Down. I need the bailiff to escort me outside. I can't see anything. Can you not get cuffed and uncuffed? I, I, no, I think he's back. saying can that he can't see out of his eyes. Like he needs can we call back. a 60 second recess? That's crazy, a recess for Eddie. Oh, 60 okay. seconds, shut and up! Else, you. Hold on, if anybody else talks that's not Thank the you. DA or the defense attorneys, I will hold you Sorry. in contempt of court. I'm sorry, Judge, I, I couldn't see anything, but I'm good now. Thank you, I'm sorry. He's good now, he's good now. Is he good? Okay, he's good. Oh, you're good, you're good. Ms. Jackson, can you please tell the court your age? Uh, yes, I am 32 years old. And when did you first meet Brett Jackson? Or, yeah, 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 Brett Jackson? Um, it was in my freshman year of high school, or college, not high school, uh, college. And can you give us just a brief synopsis of how your relationship progressed? I mean, yeah, I uh, I met him in class. I thought that he was incredibly rude um, and very just, like, I don't know, he wasn't a very kind person, okay? But, you know, we worked together on projects, spent a lot of time together, and uh, he, he kind of he kind of grew on me, you know? And, uh, I don't know, I was, I was a little obsessed, I guess with uh, hanging around him. Like, you know, I'd wait for the text, the call, everything. I really kind of relied on him. And uh, then he asked me out. And uh, we were together for a little bit. He was acting a little funky. So I was like, maybe this isn't the best idea. And I uh, called him. Objection. It calls for a narrative. Acting a little funky. Let's correct it, please. Sustained. Yes. Um, can you uh, re realign your questioning? I mean, sure, he would ask, oh. All right, Brooke, wait, before you and Mr. Jackson got married, did you have talks about your future plans? Um, I mean, I made it very clear that I really wanted children, and I wanted a you know, big house, big yard, right. Just... um, and he... While he didn't seem very interested in the conversation, he didn't seem disinterested. He just kind of like, you know, nodded his head along. And I honestly, then and there, should have, uh, I don't know. Objection. This is, this is hearsay. This is nothing. Uh, she's just simply stating the uh, relationship between Mr. Jackson and I'm going to overrule. That's bullshit. Oh, yes. I mean, we did talk about our future and like what we had wanted to do. And uh, okay. he never really talked about kids or anything. Moving on. Moving on. I can't hear. So, you. how far I would you say? Is my radio not picking up? It is. It is now. Okay, so when you got married at that time, at that point in time, you thought that the two of you were going to have children and raise a family. 
Um, yeah, I, I thought that, you know, we would save up our money, buy a house, maybe get a few cats or a dog, have some children, a farm, maybe. That's I don't know. Sexy. Yeah, I thought we were going to be very happy together. I thought, you know, she was my man. So, when did you realize that that wasn't going to happen? Um, well, uh, you know, uh, we tried a few times, and, uh, after... A very long time of trying. I um, we uh, went to the doctor, and uh, it was found out that he could not have children, and it didn't bother me. But what bothered me is that he didn't seem surprised by it, nor did he feel the need to communicate. Objection! With me. That wasn't the question. Yo, yo, team, what's going on? It's uh, yeah, it's related to the question I'm gonna overrule. What do you mean by Brett didn't seem surprised? Um, well, I mean, the doctor brought it up that, like, hey, man, this is in your genetics. Um, you're probably not going to be able to have kids. And uh, he, like always, kind of just sat there unfazed, didn't really care. Uh, I even expressed my heartbrokenness, and he did not, like, show any sort of remorse or anything for not communicating that with me. I was stoned. Stop, Mr. Jackson. No more talking. And how did the news of you not being able to have children with your husband uh, affect you in your marriage? Um, I, I was heartbroken. Uh, it, it was my dream to become a mother. I mean, I spent a lot of nights talking to him about this, and uh, I had dreams and plans to grow a family with him because... I thought that I had cared for him. Uh, it made me, I'm not going to lie to you, very depressed. I, I didn't want to get out of bed. I didn't want to eat. I didn't want to talk to my friends or my family or anything. It was, it was, it was awful. And how did this affect your marriage going forward? Um, it, it definitely put on a lot of strain. Um, it, we grew very distant. I, uh, I started sleeping on the uh, couch. Oh, um, and, uh, I, uh, eventually recommended that we get therapy. He did not enjoy that, so I said, we either work this out or I'm leaving, and he then agreed, and, uh, he started to become very paranoid because I was distant, like, who are you talking to? Who are you seeing? Oh, you're spending extra time at work. Objection, that's not the question. We can't just keep liver blabbing Sustain. outside what the question was. Sustain. Okay, so at this point, your marriage was starting to fall apart. Did you guys work on any sort of reconciliation? How do you figure reconciliation? Counseling, bonding, yeah, type yeah. things. Yeah, I mean, we went to therapy. Yeah, uh, he wasn't or very or keen to go. Brett. However, uh, after I told him that it was either therapy or I leave, he decided to go. So, I mean, yeah. He did not like it very much. He would complain a lot about being there, but, you know, that's how it is. Hmm. And did the conversation of maybe, you know, trying to adopt or surrogacy or sperm donors or any type of things like that come about? Oh, I mean, of course, I, I I loved him. I wanted to create a family with him. So just because I couldn't have kids of my own didn't mean that we couldn't have kids. Uh, I mean, I first brought up adoption. He shut that down. I brought up fostering. He was talking about how, like, these kids are all bad. They're going to ruin the house and, you know, all of this stuff. And I I, I just, I was kind of... Objection? Of lack of foundation. Mm-hmm. And she's... Providing, I'm sorry. There's uh, a lack of foundation for saying that he thought adoptive or fostering children was bad. But that is what he said to me. Okay, gonna, did did he ever... Wait, when you brought up fostering or adopting, did he agree to it? Uh, no, he did not. He did not find it a agreeable idea.
All right, so after the marriage started to break down, after the counseling that you said wasn't successful, how was Brett and your relationship starting to look then? How were you guys acting? You know, how was he acting towards you, or at least in your opinion? Um, it was double the amount of distance. I, we barely ever spoke. All I did was work and come home and eat leftovers that I microwaved and then sleep and then work and then come home over and over again. We just never really talked. Okay, um. Um, Judge, we're going to have to pause for a second. The old man doesn't have a fucking radio. Excuse my language. Oh, fucking radio. Uh, you, um, would you hey, mind, uh, he can't hear anything that's hey, going judge, on. Judge, uh, I, got, a, I got him. He's a vet. I can, I can talk to him. Thank you. Let's let let's find um. I I got a radio. Let's not badger our veterans, please. Thank you. Yeah. Boss is good. He hasn't heard anything. This lying bitch has been saying. I'm going to ask uh, somebody from... I, I have an objection. Yeah, that was wild. Yeah, this is crazy. We we can't have the defendant badgering the witness. Yes, Can I, I have a two-minute? I'm going to take my client out and have a chat with him. And four. Yep. Uh, everybody, please strike the this last question from the docket. You mean statement? Statement. Sir, can you hear now? He's lying about everything. Oh, yeah, nobody said anything to radio about it to me. Okay. But yeah, I can Thank hear. You. Yeah. Thank you for your service, by the way. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome, son. Uh, Bailiff, would you mind going over to the other side? Yes, sir. Yeah, but it's, it's a two-minute recess. Uh, Mr. Mancini, would you mind being a juror? Somebody in the audience, would you mind being a juror? We need one more. I say, uh, Felix. Nika, I'm Felix. the lead homicide investigator. Well, I can, I can lead that way. It's three instead of four. No, we, need, we just need one more. No, I can leave. It's fine. Hi, guys. Uh, Stacy, would you please? Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Miss Jackson. What'd you say? Okay. I'd like to apologize for my outburst. No, you you're, you're, cannot you're get your knife back. It's okay, just bullshit. Can... All right. Can we continue? Where Where are the drawers going? <laughs> I don't Did know where they're that? going. They're just like running out. All right. Well, this He's is. He's going to get a knife. What? Why? He said he said that. He's I believe leaving. he's leaving, and he just wanted his knife mm. back. So a juror. Really boring. Leave. I'm about to fall asleep, so I gotta. Yeah, right, if, if, if nobody wants to be here, go ahead. You're more than welcome to leave. Uh, but in that meantime, we are practicing the way we hold trials here in the city of Lavoot, uh, and to make sure that our citizens are well protected within their rights and their laws. Yeah. So if it's boring to you, go ahead. It's not boring for us. Okay, let's just continue. Thank you. I like how uh, that was... Okay, are we ready for me to continue? Yes, we are. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Brooke, can you explain to me exactly who Shan Lee is? And how you met him? Uh, yeah, um, I met Shan at work, uh, you know, we always talked, uh, hung out together, you know, <laughs> just, we were very good friends, um, he was my best friend, actually, um, yeah, I mean, I, I loved him, uh, it grew to be more, but we were really just best friends, and, uh, I, I don't know, I just, I loved him.
They can't hear you. Oh, sorry, I forgot oh, yeah. to say it on radio. It's my understanding that um, from your statement that when Mr. Jackson found out about your friendship with Mr. Lee, what what exactly did what happened? What did he say? Um. Well, one night I uh, I caught him going through my phone, and uh, he blew up at me. He was screaming, crying. Uh, he was very upset that I was talking to other men. Um, I mean, this wasn't the first time that it happened, but to me this was very different because he was, I don't know, it, it just felt different. He was a lot more um, in my face, a lot more angry with me. Um, I, I tried to make it clear that at this time he was just a work friend, somebody I had to lean on. I felt very alone before I met him, and uh, uh, Brett did not understand this at all. Um, he said uh, he, he, he would threaten and I didn't think anything of it. He would say, like, yo, if I ever catch you with anybody else, man, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, you'll see what's going to happen. And they were very vague threats, but they were horrifying. So. You can sound like that. All right, bro, can you walk me through exactly what happened on July 1st of 2020? Um, yeah, so uh, me and um, Shan, we were going out to eat at the Triple B uh, after work, like we always do, and, uh, you know, we were sitting there, and we were, we were talking about life and um, marriage problems and things like that, and um, uh, he, uh, he gave me his coat because it was cold out. We walked outside, and, uh, and there was Brett standing there with the gun pointed right at him, at Shan. Um, I... It was, it was a lot for me. I'm not going to lie to you. I, I freaked out. I kind of froze. I, I should have done something. I, I couldn't. Um, Shan uh, tried to stop Brett by uh, grabbing the gun. And um, a shot fired. And um, next thing I know, Brett is gone. Ran away. And uh, Shan, is, he's on the ground. Sorry, take your time. Yeah, uh, I mean, he's there on the ground. I, I, uh, I called the police, um, and uh, they assured me that they would catch Brett. Um, but I, it doesn't matter because I still lost Shan. Thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I still lost him. It's the love of my life. If you're talking, we can't hear you. Oh no, that was it. Oh, sir. All right, Brooke. Hmm. When the gun fired, did you see where the gun was at that moment? Uh, it was in Brett's hand. Uh, I closed my eyes immediately after I heard the pop, but, uh, there was a discharge from his firearm. And did you then call for the authorities, or did you just stand there? What happened next? Um, I, uh, I ran up to him. I, I tried to stop the bleeding. I, my hands were shaking. I, I didn't really know what to do. I'm not gonna lie to you. I, I was freaking out. Um, I, I did. I did call the cops uh, and an ambulance, but it was it was my fault. I should I should have called them earlier. I should have I should have done something. I should have called for help. I should have screamed or something. But I, I didn't. I just freaked out. And before Brett ran away. And when him and Shan were standing there and Shan was trying to take the gun away, but how far apart were they? Um, about, uh, two corona length distances, you know, the social distancing distances, you know. I'm not sure what a corona length, yeah, were I'm they sorry. within arm's reach of each other? 
Um, about. Is it okay if I show you? About about uh about this far, for me to the judge. Okay, you're gonna have to explain that to me because you said that Shan tried to. It's a lie. Shan huh. reached for the gun, so. Right. He he ran up What's to him like this. The you know. So then when the gun went off, they were about yeah, arm's length from each other? Yeah. Alright, and then when EMS and the police arrived on scene, what happened then? Um, they uh, rushed him to the hospital. It was too late, unfortunately. And um, Officer Cameron... Uh, had assured me that uh, they will figure out what happened here, and they will um, they will they will handle the situation. And have you known of Mr. Jackson owning a firearm previously? No, I had like I knew that he maybe had been verbally violent, but never physically. I didn't think of him to be that type of person. No. Objection. Mm. That's hearsay. There's it's That's no. Yes. Thank you. So you know, do you have any questions? Negative. And as far as this witness, the state rests. Thank you, counselor. Um, and uh, Ms. Dixon, okay. would you like to cross? I absolutely would love to cross. Okay. Yeah. Good evening, Miss Jackson. How are you? Oh, you yeah, know, good chicken. Perfect. Um, I would actually like to just start right at the top. Um, so when you married Mr. Jackson, um, you weren't too fond of him. Is that correct? No, I would never marry somebody that I didn't love. Uh, at the beginning, I wasn't too fond of him, uh, but I okay. didn't love him. Okay, so you weren't too fond of him at the beginning, but you did grow to love him, become fond of him enough to marry him and have relations with him, correct? Oh, of course. Um, so you did love him. At one point in your life, Mr. Jackson was actually the love of your life. Would you agree with me? Uh, yeah. Okay, perfect. Um, so, when you two got married, would you say that Brett was just as eager to have children as you were? Uh, no. Not really. He seemed very disinterested. So, are you changing your witness testimony then? Because I see here, and I quote, One of the most important things that drew me to Brett was that they were as eager as I was to become a parent. So can you please clarify to me and to the jurors what the truth is, Ms. Jackson? Counselor, oh, can yeah. I please have the page? What page is that? That is going to be page 17 uh, in paragraph 3, testimony of Brooke Daxon. Got it. Thank you. Am I clarifying for the courtroom? Which is it? Was he eager or was he not eager? Um, He was very... Uh... He was trying to keep me as passive as possible, in my opinion, right? Uh, that, that is, in fact, my opinion. Um, I would say that I want kids to go, uh-huh, yeah, sure, yep. And I didn't realize until later that he was just trying to pacify me. So now that your testimony, that you know that he is infertile, is you felt like looking back that he was trying to pacify you. But here, when you gave your testimony for this courtroom, it was, he was just as eager as I was. That is what drew you to him. That's why you married him. I can't see him faking it for so long that you That's can't nice believe that he wasn't eager. Sorry. Nothing, nothing. Go ahead. Sorry. So you disagree now with your testimony that he was not eager. Is that correct? Uh. I would like to correct that, yes. He was, he pretended to be eager. Um, and I later found out that it was not eagerness. Okay. Does it seem like the most reliable thing to change your testimony in the middle of the trial, does it, Ms. Jackson? 
No, but I am, however, human, and I, I did make a mistake in my testimony. You are correct. Okay, and so uh, going forward, uh, you did not understand how Brett did not know of his medical condition. You felt like he was hiding it from you. Is that correct? Correct. I'm sorry, what was that? Oh, I'm sorry, correct. Correct. And so Mr. Jackson has a genetic medical condition that makes him infertile. Would you agree? Um, yes, that is what the doctor had said. You do understand that with genetics, it can skip generations. It's not a positive thing that it would, that every person's going to have it, correct? Um, correct. So I don't feel that there was any reason to know. When, like I had said earlier, I'm, I would like to reiterate this, if that is fine with you, um, when we had gone to the doctor's appointment and it was brought up that he was, in fact, infertile, he sat there extremely unfazed um, and very unbothered by the fact. Um, I don't believe that I asked you a question regarding his behavior, Mr. Jackson. Okay, okay, moving on. I would say that Brett wanted to have children per your testimony and he didn't find out he had that medical condition until you both knew you would you disagree with that that is to me personally how it seemed that he had already known correct and so then after y'all found out that he was infertile and you were devastated and fell into a depression correct correct Did you once consider that possibly Brett was also devastated and was just as upset as you were, or were you just caught up in the way Objection, that you were feeling? Objection, speculation. Sustain that. Moving on, uh, your marriage was never the same because of the infertility. You both wanted kids, couldn't have kids. Brett did not want to entertain the thought of adoption, correct? Um, correct. Uh, have you ever considered adoption before you found out y'all were infertile? Uh, I have, actually, uh, out of fear that I, you know, anything can happen, you know? So. Did you have that conversation with Mr. Jackson? Um, no, it's just a, a late night thought, you know, like, oh man, you know? Okay. So he became distant and paranoid to the point you did not feel safe or comfortable in your own home. That's correct. Correct. You suck marriage counseling. Did not help your marriage. Correct. Have you considered why it didn't help your marriage? Um, I think that uh, counseling in general uh, takes a lot of work. Um, and this is my personal opinion, but he expressed multiple times that he did not want to be there. Um, and I believe that that is what led it to not working, is his uncomfortability being in counseling. Okay, and um, at what point during your marriage, while you were still married to Mr. Jackson, did you start dating Shanley? Objection, asked and answered. I haven't asked that. No, I did direct my cross and negative. That's overruled. was um, a friendship. Um, I, I had no desire to be anything more than friends, but, um, you know, I, uh, I fell in love with him, and 
um, it it was a little bit one-sided. Uh, at least I would never really know what Shan felt. It, it seemed that he did care for me. Um, we didn't... Um, uh, it, it became that... Uh, hold on, I would like to reiterate. Uh, let me restart. Um, uh, we hung out a lot. Uh, I eventually fell for him. I fell very hard. And uh, he fell for me. Um, uh, it, it, it started uh, sort of in June, uh, March, April, or I mean, sorry, I'm sorry, uh, May and June uh, is when we got really, really close. We wouldn't do anything too crazy, you know, just hang out a lot together. So during this time, you were still legally married to Mr. Jackson and still coming home to y'all's residence every evening, correct? Correct. Or not separated? Correct. Would you character characterize that as cheating on your spouse, Miss Jackson? Mm, no. Uh, at that point, I had felt as if you, Miss Jackson, do not think that while uh, you are married. Let her, let her answer. Let her answer the first question. Continue. Uh, no, I would not characterize that. I feel personally uh, that my spouse was um, never around. Whether or not still legally we were married, he never showed his face. Never cooked, never clean, was never home. I was all alone. I'm sorry, I have to stop this. This is not what I asked. I did not see us as um, me and uh, Shan as dating, uh, but as very close friends. We were in love with. I, I would like to pull out my fierce first piece of evidence. I would like to pull up the let me exhibit B. In Exhibit A. That be presented? Yes, you may present. Uh, does Do all the jurors have access to the case file so they can see the evidence? I do not. Speaking on behalf of the jurors. I also do not. Alright. I also do not. I only said it because, you know, she was talking... Exhibit B, C, whatever, you know, uh, it's like NASA language, you know, I don't understand. All right, give me one second, guys uh, and gals. Give me two minutes as well. We are going to send them over to you right now. Okie doke, thank you. Mm -hmm. And then if you could, counselor, if you could just uh, reference which page the uh, exhibits are on, that would be very helpful. I'm so sorry, I didn't see you. Oh, you're fine. Okay, I sent them to everybody. I think I... Wait, hold on. Well, yeah, you had it. Miss Jackson. It's in... Third, it's the third sentence or where was it? That's the PDF file I sent you. Can, uh, can we get a page number? I'm sorry. I apologize. Page 43 and 44, I believe. Thank you. What page is it, Counselor? 
sorry, I can't see it anymore. Miss Dixon? You okay? I'm sorry, what page? I think she said she had to be in her head for a little bit. It's 43. Where are you guys looking at this one? It's a PDF that got sent to your DMs. I did not receive one. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Uh, counselor, Miss Dixon, please. Can you hear me? Hello. I think she's in her head, Judge. Okay. Yes, right. I was. I had a fire to put out. No worries, no worries. Does everybody have the exhibits? Yes. And what page was that on, Counselor? Page 43 and 44, Exhibit A and Exhibit B. I'm going to start with Exhibit B first. May 4th, 2020. Subject. Still can't believe Brett doesn't know. Bad Jackson. I can't believe Brett hasn't caught on to the fact you got a new email. I'm just glad we could continue what we have going. I enjoy being with you. I can't wait till we can be together and not have to worry about Brett. Are you coming to my apartment tonight? I'm ready to get some work done. Your lover, S. Lee. I would say at some point in the relationship, you and two, you two started having relations while you were still married to Mr. Jackson. Objection, speculation? Not speculation. Well, as the evidence has been submitted, it, it is, uh, I'm going to overrule. It, it does not state anywhere that they had relations. No, 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 it does not. You're right. It's heavily implied. It's still speculation. Sustain. She was banging him. It says, your lover, S. Lee. Can you explain that to me, Miss Jackson? Um, of course, uh, we were best friends. It was a long-running joke um, uh, that, you know, we were... Uh, have you ever heard the uh, term, like, work husband, work wife, like that, you know? It's sort of like that, you know? Let's go to Exhibit A. Can't wait to see you tonight. I can't wait to see you either. Will be fun to get some quote unquote work done tonight. I do love quote unquote work. You do you care to explain that text message to me, Miss Jackson? Of course. Um. So when hold on, hold on. we counselor, hold on one second. Who's saying what here? Uh, Shanley is on the left. And... Shanley is the gray, and okay. Mrs. Jackson is the gotcha. blue. Thank you. Um. Yes. So. Often when we would meet up to work, it would more or less just become us talking and playing board games instead of actually doing our work. So we would say it was work, we would try to get work done, but we would end up literally just dr uh, drinking and uh, talking the entire time, getting off track. Okay. So I going back up to your witness, to your testimony... Uh, on page 19, the first paragraph. At first, Shan and I were completely platonic and had no desire to be anything more than great friends. But Shan and I eventually began falling madly in love with each other. So right there, self-admits that you two started falling madly in love with each other 
and that it was no longer a platonic relationship, correct? Um, correct. Like I had said before, we were in love, but we could not move forward with any physical relationship. We, uh, we spent a lot of time working on my, uh, divorce papers together, and, uh, he even helped me find somebody to, uh, like, legally help me with that stuff. So you're admitting to meeting with a divorce attorney? Um, I was seeking legal counsel. I did not necessarily find an attorney. Just, you know, asking around for some help and some advice. So, you and Mr. Shanley were having late night evenings together where you drank and did work and talked about your divorce. That was not filed yet and Mr. Jackson was not aware of, correct? Uh, correct. We also played board games. <laughs> board okay. games. Twister. Judge, Would you get the you? defendant to stop making snide comments, yes, please? Yes, Mr. Jackson, I'm going to have to ask you to um, please keep the comments to yourself. Thank you. Would you agree with me that possibly the reason Mr. Jackson had extreme paranoia regarding you cheating is because you were cheating on him? Um, it happened even before I met uh, Shan, though, so I, I, I disagree on the front that it has anything to do with uh, Mr. Shan, more or less just any guy I kind of came in contact with. Um, yeah. Would you agree that Mr. Jackson would go through your personal emails and texts? All the time. And then would when I... you argue with me that that is abnormal for a healthy married couple to do? Uh, correct. It is very abnormal. He should trust me and I should trust him. Would you agree or disagree with me that Mr. Jackson found evidence that you were cheating on him? Uh, I would disagree. I never cheated. I was only friends. It could never be anything more because I was still married. On July 1st, 2020, you were meeting up with Mr. Shanley to grab a cup of coffee and talk about him leaving for the divorce, right? Uh, it was uh, dinner, but yes. Um, your witness testimony says, on July 1st, 2020, Shannon and I had met up to grab a cup of coffee and talk about me leaving Brett and filing for divorce. So it was a coffee or was dinner, Miss Jackson. Was that the, uh, the, uh, the Triple B? The Bob, Big Bob's Burger? Is that the same day? No, 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 no. It's page 19. Page 19, uh, the second paragraph on the bottom. Okay, yeah, uh, we met up to grab coffee. Yep, sorry. Went and got coffee, and you're walking to Big Bob's Burgers, correct? Uh, correct. And it was one of you and Shan's favorite spots, right? Y'all just went there all the time. Uh, correct. When you walked up to Big Bob's Burger, Mr. Jackson was standing outside? Uh, correct. Were uh, you afraid to see him standing outside with your lover? Mm, I was uh, very surprised, and um, I wouldn't say scared or anything. And I would I'd like to reiterate for the court that uh, while we did love each other, um, never mind, you know what, yeah. And it's your testimony given earlier that Shanley ran up to Mr. Jackson and knocked the gun out of his hand. Is that correct? Uh, there was a... Yes, he did, because it was pointed at us. Actually, uh, according to the testimony, Shan tried to disarm Brett. I think that we're allowed to help our witnesses on the stand. Well, no, that's what mm -hmm. she stated during my examination of her. 
She I actually recall a demonstration over here where she said he ran up to him and tried to take the gun out of his hand. Tried, yes. That's what I just said. That is the okay. thing to disarm. The gun went off. You immediately closed your eyes, correct? Um, yes. Actually see if Mr. Jackson pulled the trigger. Uh, incorrect. Like I had told uh, Miss Harley, I did see the discharge and the second that I heard the shot following the Again, discharge, that's not the that. question I asked. Did you see Mr. Jackson pull the trigger with his hand, yes or no? I saw the discharge. Did you see Mr. Jackson pull the trigger with his finger, yes or no? I saw the discharge. Jesus. Judge, will you please order the witness to answer my question? What? As soon as we yeah. heard, just ran in here. That's an officer. Go off duty, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Um, oh no, you're fine, you're fine, I'm sorry. You're good, you're good. Um, yeah, uh, Miss Jackson, go ahead and, uh, go ahead and answer that question for the courtroom, please, and the drawers. It all happened very fast. Uh, all I can say is that I did see the discharge, whether or not I saw him pull the trigger. He was fairly far, and it was nighttime out. So you didn't see Mr. Brett's finger pull the trigger? All right. I'm, um, asking him. She's refusing to answer I, the question. I'm, I get it. I get it. Um, uh, Miss Jackson, uh, yes or no? I, I mean, man, I saw the gun discharge. I did not see him pull the trigger, I guess. Okay. But I saw the gun Thank discharge. you. That's, that's all we need. When you heard the gun discharge, you immediately closed your eyes and fell down in fear. Uh, page 20 of her testimony, correct? Correct. So with your eyes closed and you falling down, crouched over in fear, would you agree that it would have been impossible for you to see how Mr. Lee was shot? Uh, can you reiterate that? I'm not following. Your eyes were closed on the ground, correct? With your eyes shut and you on the ground, were you able to see how Mr. Lee was shot? I'm not going to lie. I'm like, what do you mean by how he was shot? How he was shot. Were you able to see how Mr. Lee was shot? Oh, uh, with the gun? The angle, who You're did really it? Referring, she's referring to the position of the gun. Is that correct? Uh, That's Well, it. before I closed my eyes, the gun was fairly close to his chest, so... But you didn't actually see the gunshot and the bullet enter Mr. Shanley due to your eyes being closed on the ground, is that right? Excuse me, Correct. Judge. Yes, sir. Am I allowed to butt in real quick on this? No, absolutely not. Go ahead and have a seat. <laughs> Correct. Perfect. I am going to move down to the witness testimony of Brett Jackson. I'd like to reference a part in it really quick, if, if possible, Judge. What Allow page? it. Let me, I'm going to pull it up. Page 32. Okay. This is part of the testimony of Brett Jackson, my client for the jurors. I'm going to recite a portion of the second paragraph on the page. After a few minutes, I knew I had to go back because I had to explain what happened and that the gun had accidentally gone off after it was knocked out of my hand. When I got back, Brooke was still there beside Shan who had died. Brooke looked up at me and said, you killed Shan. I told Brooke I didn't mean to and that the gun must have discharged when Shan knocked it out of my hand and it fell to the ground. Brooke said, oh no, I'm not going to let you get away with this. I'm going to tell the police you shot Stan on purpose, which Brooke ultimately did. Would you agree with that statement? Uh, I would, because he did shoot him. Even though your eyes were closed and you didn't actually see him pull the trigger. Correct. 
That's the end of my questioning. I do not rest my case with her yet. Um, I still would like to reserve the legal right to ask her further questions to rebut if I need to. Okay. Um, does the state have any, uh, would the state like to hey, cross? Thank you. Not at this time, Your Honor. We're going to reserve the right to question her later if needed. Okay. 